Brought to you by AwesomeDrinks.com. It's Jen's birthday this month. Use coupon code JENS37 and save 15% on everything you purchase. Put down your Pokemon cards! It's time to make a cocktail! Today, a cocktail submitted by Nick. It's called the Vaporeon. It's a Pokemon name. Okay. I guess it looks like a little purple water drop guy. I don't really Pikachu? know. Pikachu? Not Pikachu. He's yellow. He's yellow. This cocktail is just built over crushed ice. Let's see, there's sour mix. So we're gonna shake it. What would be a Did we good... just get more to Heaney Warriors in? Why, are they out of stock? David said, are you guys gonna get more I got, to Tahi? I got, I got eight of them right over there. Yeah, we got some, right? Yeah, are they not in stock? Um, boom, 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 boom. We're gonna shake this cocktail. Oh. Because I can. So it's really not complicated. It's a half ounce of sour mix. And the, and the reason I selected this is I had another cocktail in mind and I ended up not having cucumber for it. And I needed to use a sour mix that I just created. I made four ounces, I only need a half ounce. But at least it's better than just letting it fester in my refrigerator for the week. So that's what you do. When you need, when you've got an ingredient that can per that's perishable, like a nice fresh squeezed sour mix from the sour mix tree, that's when you decide you're gonna make a drink that uses sour mix from that sour mix tree. Peach schnapps, which comes from the peach tree. And we're gonna do a half ounce. So, you guys, what? You said you got eight in. You didn't, the awesome drinks has zero. So ah, crap. I'll put eight in right now. Yeah, I think I added eight. There's, yeah, because there's four in this box and four in the next. For those that are also looking for a tiki bowl, the next thing that come out, Tiki Farm released a bowl, cause, and, and this is gonna be in limited supply right now because we don't know how many people are gonna want. Um, I, I picked up like 12 and one's mine. This is the new Tiki Farm Tiki Bowl. It's a 36 ounce Tiki Bowl. It's, it's a scorpion bowl, if you will, but yeah, it's a big name. It's Papu something or other. It'll be on Awesome Drinks by then, so you can just Google it. But that's the, uh, or go to my site and find it. This is the, the new bowl. It's really cool looking. They, they put a lot of work into it. It's like 35 bucks or something like that. I gotta figure out what the price is. But it's definitely a <laughs> sweet design. The person that submitted this recipe is in the chat room. He said, holy crap, I submitted that recipe. <laughs> Did I put the peach schnapps in there? Oh yeah, blue curacao. So, an ounce of blue curacao. See, sometimes people in the chat room get their recipes done. That's Eventually. a lot of blue curacao. I'm, I'm in some serious trouble. I'm gonna have to get me some blue curacao. I guess I should have asked them if it's shaken, but it should be because it's got a sour mix in it. Where's my vodka? We're gonna use Husky Vodka because we can. We use whatever vodka you like. It's, if it's not crappy vodka, it's probably gonna taste similar to uh, vodka. All right, we're gonna do out. Oh, it's just got a nice pour smell. Pour smells are dangerous because I just want to get all crazy with them. Pour from like up here. The, um, one of those bartenders, Flair. Oh, yeah, I want to be a Flair bartender when I grow up. It's gonna be cool. You better work on that. I know. You're, you're pretty much grown up. That's the problem. I'm, I'm already on my downhill slope. Shake this up right here. Crushed ice. So for crushed ice, I use the Lewis bag, which of course, like everything else, that's awesome. It's at Awesome Drinks. And I will pour in the ice I I don't have a ice hammer, so I just bash it up against my concrete siding of the basement. What garage, mean? Really. Yeah, the garage. So if you have a garage, you're already halfway there. All you need is a Lewis bag. If you have a basement that's not finished. Or an unfinished basement. Or if you have a friend you don't like anymore, there's plenty of ways to crush your ice. I prefer crushing it on a friend, but sometimes or you just don't have them around. Or, yeah. Used to be friend? Uh, would be, once be friend. I'm gonna need me. Shh. See, having this whole thing here makes life a lot easier. I get to pick a strainer. Or just take the one that I already have here. Strain this bitch right out right here. Oh, it's nice blue. Color. So that ice will come up in a minute. There you go. So for uh, for garnish, what I would do is take your most expensive Pokemon card and cut it at the bottom 
and slide it over the top. So just make one of these, otherwise it's gonna cost you a lot. My son plays, and he didn't know who this was. He doesn't really play. I showed him the picture, and what? Somebody just bought a Tiki Ball Sunny Rod Line! Yeah, 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 yeah! I don't know what I'm talking about. No. Yeah, probably not. So. You don't know what you're talking about. Don't yes. Worry. That's supposed to be like that. I have a camera over there, and I like to just cut this stuff. Whoa! Got a little bite to it. Um, this recipe, first off, there's a lot of familiarity with this build out. There's lots of cocktails that utilize the sour mix and blue curacao uh, and vodka. But I don't know about the peach schnapps additive. The peach schnapps kind of, kind of balances out that sour mix. Where the sour mix does have a sweet component to it, the peach schnapps has a super, super sweet component to it. And it makes this a little bit sweeter, yet it still gets you right here. That's my jowls. Gets you right in the jowls. That's just because you can't taste bitter. Uh, yes, I can't taste certain bitters. That's interesting news. Your mom can though, so you must have heredited. Yeah. Got it hered hereditarily. Inherited from your dad. Or my father. But there's certain bitters no, that- your mom can, I gave her the thing. Yeah, so I'll have to see if my father can. Maybe it's a recessive gene, but there's a, a style of bitter or something in bitter that you either have as part of your genetic makeup or you don't. You put this little piece of like paper that has the bitter on it, and if you go, then it's obviously you did a job of the hut. Then you have the bitter gene. I don't, so I can eat it like paper. It tastes like paper. It does have a little bit of bitterness, just a little hint if you'll put like four or five in your mouth, but I think that would kill the normal human being. Um, but at the bitter, we did, here's my bitters all lined up. We took a bitters class at Tales of the Cocktail last week, which was awesome. Uh, and I got some books too. I got to see the, the, the author of uh, Beach Bum. We got to see Beach Bum do a presentation. And yeah. uh, we got to see, oh, oh, uh, what's Beach Bum? There's another guy. There's a couple other guys that, that were up there. The author from the Rum History book she's reading it was like Tim Wagner or Chris uh, or Wayne Curtis. Wayne, Wayne Curtis, Tim Wagner, same thing. Uh, and that was pretty cool. The Bitter Class, which uh, was, uh, what's his name? Hunter, Hunter. Camper. Uh, ca Cam yeah. Camp Not Hunter, though. Camp English. Close. Hunter Hearst Helm Point. No, wrong thing. So, what I've learned is the different types of bitters. You get to taste, we got to taste wormwood. Um, which was the most bitter one? It was um, aloe. aloe. Who knew? Uh, the other thing I found out, and I put this on Facebook.com slash cocktail TV, but most and people some of probably those, don't notice. On that same note, though, before you go on, you Into couldn't what I was taste saying. some of those. Mm -hmm. Aloe doesn't bother me at all. I could show yeah. aloe all day long. And it was absolutely horrible. <laughs> she couldn't take take the aloe. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, see what she just did to me? Sorry, cocktail TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, found out when you look at wormwood in the in the Thujone content, wormwood, everybody's like, oh, my God, you have wormwood in your absinthe? That means you're going to see pink elephants, which isn't really true, but it's got it's got that, that uh, hallucinogenic Thujone in it, but it's like... 10 parts per million or something like that. Like, you're not going to be affected by it. But it turns out Sage actually has more Thujone than, uh, and this is actually no knowledge for people who actually look it up, but Thujone is more potent in Sage than it is in Wormwood. So people are all like, ah, you can't have abscess in the country, even though you can now since 2007. But back then you couldn't. And you could just eat Sage and you're getting more of it. I don't know if anybody eats Sage, but maybe distill it down into like Sage to absinthe. And it would have been worse for you. Go figure. Uh, this cocktail, however, is for the sweet tooths that don't like the taste of alcohol but don't mind crunchy ice pieces. Uh, it has, there is a little bit of back-end ethanol, I think, but it's it's kind of hidden by this intense peach that just lingers. Like 15, 20 seconds later, all you're getting is it's, you're breathing out peaches at people, which means this could be used before meetings. And you get the peach, it's not onions or anything. Uh, the sour mix, for my personal taste, my Vaporeon would have probably one ounce of sour mix to, to counterbalance the, uh, I just like sour mix, there's no good excuse, but maybe an ounce of sour mix because it might not be as sour as the peach schnapps is sweet. So maybe maybe there is science behind that, that theory. 
overall though it's it's cool neat blue cocktail it works best in a low ball it's just the right size for probably a low a low ball and a half or a double low ball this is the leaning low ball it's i'm gonna guess an eight ounce drink or eight ounces of fluid you get your crushed ice so you can get those leaning low balls on awesome and then you can get on alcohol wherever you buy alcohol at the store or online if you buy it online you're in good shape and of course you'll be able to find these pretty soon out there as well if you're looking to get like 32 ounces of awesomeness in your face hole. Everydaydrinkers.com for everything else. Patreon.com slash CMC. If you want to be able to donate to the show, that is where you'll be able to do it. Otherwise, you won't be able to. Well, you, you can find ways. Send me money. Uh, that's it. Cocktail TV is our Facebook page. So you can go there and like us over there. That'd be awesome. We're done. Question of the day. What? Oh, I had one. But go ahead. Here's your favorite. What is your quest? Um... Uh, I was gonna, <laughs> no, I was gonna say, what color, what does blue taste like to you? Blue raspberry. Blue raspberry, which is not a real raspberry. You'll never find a blue raspberry in the wild, just as long as you know, it just never doesn't happen. If you, oh, stupid chat. UV blue raspberry is blue. It turns out it's more citrus. Blue curacao, bitter. Hold on. This chat. is probably even more sweet with a, with a cheap blue curacao. Chat's being... Chat! Stop being a bunghole and scrolling. Question of the day. Question if you day. could make a cocktail from a trading card game or anime show, etc., what would be the cocktail and what would go in it? Oh, that's a lot of work. It, it, you guys can keep this as, as detailed or least as you want. But you got uh, anime or cartoon, was that it? Or card game or anything like that. Maybe even a board game. D&D &D style. I would go D&D. &D. I wouldn't even care. I'd just be like, I want to make a D&D &D cocktail. What would your name of that cocktail be and what were some of the random ingredients you might put in there? Let's see, I'll, I'll answer this question for me. If it were me, I would like to create uh, a hobgoblin. It would probably have either Jersey Toxic Waste or Midori in it. It's gotta be something green. Uh, maybe, you know what? A hobgoblin I think would really be super epic with green chartreuse because, or, or something that would get it green, maybe a yellow chartreuse in a blue curacao. I don't even know what that would do to your face. Uh, it would probably have something red component, like a grenadine in it as well, but I don't want it to turn purple, so just a little hint. Um, I think the overall ingredient would definitely be bitter herbal for a hobgoblin, because it just seems like they should be evil, stand up to, and, and want to just slice you in the face with their bitterness. What would you guys do? There you go, hobgoblin cocktail. It's done. It's like, it's, it's green chartreuse, um, a dash of grenadine, uh, a little bit of vodka with ice. Both of them. We're done. We're teaching you how to drink.